Forces along with Denmark, the Netherlands and Norway, which ordered F-16s in June of 1975, 348 aircraft in total across those four nations. <laughs> Yeah. 
but the MiG-15 represented a very serious advance. It first took to the air not long after the American jet that was to become its great adversary, the North American F-86 Sabre. And from the outset, the MiG-15 was able to exceed a thousand kilometers per hour. Nearly 650 miles an hour at an altitude of around 9,800 feet. The type came into service in 1949, and the following year saw the much improved MiG-15 BIS variant. The Soviets were able to test it in its bomber attacker role against the captured Boeing B-29 Super Fortress, which was also produced by the Soviets as the Tupolev Tu-4. But it wasn't just a bomber destroyer, the MiG-15, it could also be used very effectively as a fighter bomber. The first combat use of the type was in 1950, towards the end of the Chinese Civil War. The Chinese Communists were receiving Soviet assistance in their fight against the Chinese Nationalists. One division of MiG-15 BIS aircraft was deployed in that conflict, and it was one of those that notched up the MiG-15's first aerial victory against a somewhat unlikely opponent, namely a twin piston engine Lockheed P-38 Lightning of the Chinese nationalist side. But its most famous combat success occurred between 1950 and 53 during the Korean War flying for the North Korean side, but it wasn't just North Koreans that piloted them, there were Soviet and Chinese pilots as well. And this little aeroplane proved a very tough jet aircraft by a piston engine opponent. This indeed is the reason why there's another MiG-15 on this airfield at the moment in the Fleet Air Arm Museum. That's another license-built Polish example, because it was on the 8th of August 1952 that the only... ...air-to-air -air kill of the Korean War by a British pilot was scored. That was by a Sea Fury FB-11 of the Fleet Air Arm. Credits officially being given in that instance to Lieutenant Peter Carmichael. Did you get the links with the um, cat and the You've got to do that on the way back. It's absolutely must. Did you get the thumbs up? Oh, yeah. Through the rest of the Cold War, MiG-15s had occasional confrontations with Western aircraft around the fringes of Soviet and other communist territory. There was the shoot-down of a Douglas DC-3 of the Swedish Air Force conducting electronic intelligence mission over the Baltic and indeed of the Catalina amphibious flying boat that was sent to try and look for and, and it turned out unsuccessfully rescue its crew. A Royal Air Force Avro Lincoln was shot down by MiGs in one of the Berlin air corridors the following year. Later in 1956, during the Suez Crisis, MiG-15s of the Egyptian Air Force operated against Israeli and RAF aircraft. They were built under license by Avia in Czechoslovakia, by Shenyang in China in two-seat form only, and as here by WSK and ELH in Poland. This one dates from 1952. It served with the Polish Air Force until 1990, when it went into private hands initially in the USA. It's been part of the Norwegian Air Force Historical Squadron alongside their de Havilland Vampires since 2014, representative, therefore, of the Cold War enemy. And there it is being brought into land beautifully by the founder and boss of the Norwegian Air Force Historical Squadron, Kenneth Orkvistler.
and the colour scheme he chose for the MiG-15 there is that of an example that was flown by the Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, who was stationed. And there it is, if you look up and out to your right, a very familiar warbird shape in the skies, running in this from the Hangar 11 collection at Northfield in Essex, the North American P-51D Mustang. Design work. 